in the UAE. Please, Dr. Esamali, the stage is yours, and we are very excited to hear what you actually have to tell us today. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Susanna, uh, and uh, welcome to everyone in the conference, and thanks for uh, giving me this chance and opportunity to uh, speak in this uh, respected uh, conference. Uh, let's start uh, direct. Uh, let me share. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me start. I speak today about the uh, emergency plan implementation for uh, a hospital. Why we speak about these uh, topics? Uh, actually, the current situation for uh, COVID, it take our attention to a very, very important point. All of us in our hospital, we have already emergency plan. And we put this emergency plan and we put uh, different figures in the emergency plan. Uh, in the emergency situation, we identify in the plan that there is internal uh, disaster like uh, fire, like explosion, like hazardous uh, material, like uh, spill uh, or uh, released uh, uh, any stuff dangerous. Uh, and there is external uh, emergency, like minor external disaster, major external disaster, minor external disaster like incident involving like small uh, incident or accident for car, major external like incident involving large number of uh, victim, uh, disaster uh, threats affecting the hospital or the community around uh, the hospital, or disaster in other community uh, nearby uh, city or all for all over the city, uh, disaster due to war which is affect all the nation or all uh, the country. We first make emergency code. The first code for internal emergency code, and I will not speak in this in detail, there is red for fire, there is blue, a uh, code blue for uh, cardiac arrest, there is code brown for hazardous. There is what if any uh, violent person, uh, code yellow for a baby abduction, code black if there is any pump, uh, good green if there is internal uh, disaster, all this inside the hospital. But outside the hospital, we have only a uh, good orange. We will announce good orange, but does the staff know which level of emergency we have in good orange? Does it minor or major, or it's a disaster street affecting all the hospital or around the community? or the disaster in other city and we have to, uh, or we are involved in all this disaster coming now and the affecting all uh, the world. So first point, when we implement and uh, for continuous improvement as a quality, we find that we need to classify even with orange, we have to classify it. We have to train the staff to tell them that this good orange it's for minor, for major, for so, so, so. First, to our preparedness in the hospital to be ready. Does it's only just minor three, four victim, or it's major or whatever, we have to have a level for good orange. This is the first point. Second point, if it affects all the country, actually uh, in over the nation, uh, emergency code, uh, there is emergency code, and there is level green for peace, and there is uh, everything safe. There is yellow, there is orange, there is red, but all this, it's only for threatening or if there is war or if there is terrorist uh, attack of anything affecting direct uh, the country. But if there is any emergency code for epidemic disease, no. In all the country, all over the world, uh, there is no, and uh, they cannot. And from WHO, when it start uh, COVID-19, I was follow daily uh, all the news. There is no code. Just as they won't say that, is it epidemic or not epidemic? Okay, if it's epidemic, it's in which level? Now, all over one year, we see that uh, it's coming, sometimes coming very high, 
sometimes coming uh, low or coming less and after coming high again, we have to announce code from WHO that we are now in this code color. To can know in each code or in each level of emergency, we have to have some uh, instruction for our staff, some instruction for our facility, for our hospital, some preparedness internally and also externally. Now the situation or the current situation that there is emergency committee and we're receiving the instruction from the emergency co committee and we have to start implement and we have to follow uh, because this is the right till now. This is the situation and we cannot change, but the aim is to learn. It's continuous improvement. It's continuous learning. We know now and we saw what happened. So we have for the future, we have to be more preparedness, especially that there is some countries and some community, they was not ready until now. Also, there is some countries they cannot deal by proper way with uh, COVID for this. Uh, even now, the numbers also increase, even all the precaution, even also we start the vaccine, but still the number still increase. Okay, let's go to the plan. Uh, who uh, prepared the plan? Who responsible to prepare this plan? Uh, the quality team, uh, the infection control team, uh, the HSE team, nursing team, and physician. Uh, quality should because they are responsible for implementation uh, of this uh, plan and uh, monitoring and follow up. Uh, infection control, we will speak about their role and also for HSE and nursing and physician. This is the main cornerstone to uh, cornerstone, uh, the two front. Uh, that's for the uh, facing uh, this situation. Uh, the background for uh, the situation, the healthcare workers are at the, uh, the high risk of COVID because as I say, the nursing and the physician, they are the first line which receives the COVID patient. So when we put the plan, we have to uh, thinking very deeply how to protect uh, this front line. Uh, the measure of what should prevent transmission in healthcare uh, facility uh, is protect patient and healthcare workers. This is a first priority. Safeguard risk uh, group. Uh, if any groups of patient like long-term uh, patient or uh, some uh, group of nurses or in ER or in uh, OT, whatever, or in uh, IP. So we have to safeguard or to reduce uh, the risk for uh, the groups. Slow the demand of, uh, for uh, specialist healthcare, such as uh, intensive care unit, ICU, or emergency, or whatever. Uh, minimize the export of uh, cases to other healthcare facilities and uh, the wider community. In most instances, uh, coronavirus are believed to be transmitted from respiratory tract infection, uh, from person to person, there is rust, uh, uh, by droplets or either being, even now it's by touching or whatever, there is a lot of uh, serious thing now and there's still the study uh, and every day we discover a new way for uh, the infection even by touching services uh, by, uh, for uh, COVID. Uh, first, the rule for occupational health and uh, safety. Uh, additional measures that need to be uh, taken uh, when we have cases uh, registered for, at the healthcare uh, promises way, uh, additional risk uh, to the staff. Uh, the rule for the staff for occupational health. First, uh, they have to measure the risk in each area and they have to report to the quality uh, what is the risk uh, in each area. First, second, they are responsible to guide uh, the staff uh, in each area, uh, how to protect themselves, what to do, uh, how to uh, deal with this uh, situation. Uh, if this happens, what we will do? So uh, occupational health uh, and safety, they have big role uh, for this situation. They have to measure always the risk and continuous. It's a, in our hospital, we say that it's daily, we have to measure before in the normal situation, maybe we make it monthly and we make a risk uh, report, risk assessment reports. But now we have to see 
daily. Every day there is something uh, new. Every day we have to uh, face some emergency uh, situation. The Occupational Health and Safety also measures should be agree, uh, measured and occupied with occupational safety and health services workers taking into account all type of risk, all type of risk. We cannot neglect any type uh, of risk. The safety and health community should be con uh, consulted uh, one in the place and the uh, risk to healthcare uh, workers and others. Other stuff that belong to uh, medically uh, vulnerable groups and uh, potential mitigation measures need to be addressed in a collaboration with the uh, occupational health services or health and safety committee. Uh, this is the role for occupation, as we say, it's day-to-day -day work, it's very important, and they are the first guard uh, for reducing the risk in this situation. Uh, second uh, guard, we say uh, infection prevention and uh, control uh, of infection measures or the infection control team due to the likelihood uh, of virus transmission by persons with few or no uh, symptoms, healthcare facilities should ensure that physical distancing uh, measures are implemented by staff, uh, visitors and patients uh, particularly in setting with uh, widespread uh, community transmission. Actually, the main mission for the infection control is the implement implementation of uh, all the instruction, all the uh, 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 infection control uh, instruction for all the patients, for all the staff, for all the visitors, uh, to be sure that all the hand sanitizer is available uh, to keep the distance, uh, they have to work all over the hours in all over the hospital just to monitor and to control and manage all the implementation of uh, all instructions for the infection control. The use of medical masks by healthcare workers for uh, personal protection and source control should be strongly considered in a clinical area during all routine activities as a measure for reducing transmission with a healthcare setting in area with community transmission. Actually, before the mask, it's very important and we we're giving instruction don't to deal with a patient without mask. So you wear the mask inside your clinic when you deal with a patient. Now you have to, to wear the mask everywhere and all the time. Uh, in the clinic, outside in the clinic, when you go around in the hospital, because there is visitors, there is another stuff. So, it's different now in this situation that uh, medical mask, it's very important, it's very critical. You have to wear your mask all the time, whenever, wherever you move in the hospital. Standard precaution and uh, in particular, uh, meticulous hand and uh, respiratory hygiene should be uh, emphasized. Before we will say and, and speak with uh, infection control about hand hygiene, and you say we must and we must follow, uh, we measure the percentage, it's sometimes 70, sometimes 80% from the people which uh, hand sanitize or wash their hand. Now it must be 100%. So it must be, it's very restricted for everybody, for everyone to make hand sanitize and to wash his hand uh, regularly. Uh, third line for the triage. Uh, actually, the triage, now we will come for the front lines uh, for the nurses. Uh, so starting from triage, emergency service and the primary care staff, including uh, physician, nursing, and administrative staff, having contact with patients should be made aware of the current COVID-19 epidemiological situation in their country and globally, including known risk factors for infection, uh, we have to follow up always. Uh, what is the new uh, from WHO, from other country, from all the researches? Uh, there is new generation uh, now in UK, there is new generation in South Africa, there is new generation in Brazil, and another fourth and fifth generation from the virus. So we have to know and we have to update our staff, especially the physician and the nurses. 
uh, clinical symptoms and signs of COVID-19. Uh, every day we discover that there is some symptoms we didn't know before, and there is some patient have uh, this symptom, specifically for the new generation for COVID. There is how we know that this one is from a previous generation or this generation or whatever. So we have also to update the researches for the symptoms from the new generation for the virus. Uh, recommended IBC uh, measures uh, for infection control, uh, procedures for uh, reporting and transferring uh, people under investigation uh, and uh, probably con or confirmed cases, all the patient which confirmed uh, COVID, we have to know the procedure and very restricted, we have to follow the procedure for transferring uh, this patient from our hospital or from department to department to not be factors for spreading uh, the infection. Liaise like with the uh, hospital employers to assess the on-site availability of appropriate PPE, personal protection in, uh, equipment for all personnel at uh, the point of care. Actually, this point in the beginning, it was a very big problem because suddenly uh, we have to have for everyone staff, medical or non-medical, we have to have, for example, a uh, mask or medical mask. Uh, we have our stock and not only we, all the hospitals, they have their stock, but then suddenly we find that this is stock, it's not enough. And when we start to purchase, it's not available because everybody buy uh, mask, medical or non-medical, all the hospital. So we face some difficulty in the beginning. So this one of the first point, which I want to uh, take attention for this one, when we have learned from our previous uh, plan, and when we implement, we find some points like this point. So we have to consider, we know what's the plan to have enough and available uh, PPE for all the staff, which is be enough for the medical and non-medical staff on our hospital. Uh, the grid se uh, separate area in the emergency department for the assessment and management of patient with uh, respiratory symptoms in order to uh, spare PPE. When we receive the patient in triage, and we see that there is symptoms for a respiratory system, it's not necessary that this patient is uh, positive COVID. So uh, we're not also confirming that he's negative. So we have to have area to separate, to isolate this uh, patient uh, and to perform a point of care assessment for assessed likelihood of COVID infection including the clinical presentation of the patient and review of uh, clinical and epidemiological information. And the assessment should be based on the latest case uh, definitions. We have to separate this patient. We have to tell them, to inform them that we have separate you for this reason one, two, three, and this is what we will do. And we will make uh, the PCR uh, test to confirm if you're positive or negative. So you have to cooperate with us. So the patient must know what's going on. We must create a separate area in the emergency department or the hospital for swapping, uh, to have the swap for the uh, patient for COVID-19, including the, uh, sorry. Uh, to create a separate area in the emergency department in the hospital for swapping for the uh, patient to have the swab and to transfer these samples to uh, the lab to can receive the test uh, as fast as we can to can inform uh, the patient and also we have to map and develop uh, policies for prioritizing stock of ppe as we say we have to make it available uh, everywhere uh, for all the staff, for administrative and uh, for non, uh, for medical and non-medical. Also, we have to have uh, for uh, for oxygen, including uh, nasal cannulas and non-invasive uh, ventilation devices. It must be also available in emergency area and in this area for isolation. If possible, provide for triage by uh, telephone or uh, uh, telemedicine and online services to reduce the number of people with symptoms of COVID-19. Not everyone has symptoms for respiratory 
uh, tract infection uh, symptoms must come to the hospital. He can just tell by telephone that I have these symptoms and you can tell him regarding to the severity, he can come or he can take this because now, or as we see, there was very big problem to occupy all the patient which is coming. Everybody was panicked. Everybody just has any symptoms for the COVID just direct running to uh, the hospital. So now we start uh, as a private hospital and also the government, uh, please, if you have any symptoms, call this number and we start to communicate and to see is it severe and is it uh, more suspected to be COVID or not. So to can come or not, uh, I think this one just to reduce uh, the number of patients and to can occupy all the patients which are coming to uh, the hospital. Uh, the personal protective equipment for assessment and collection of diagnostic respiratory sample, the recommended PPE for the uh, clinical assessment of uh, possible COVID-19 cases can be adapted as follows. Healthcare workers performing the first assessment without direct contact, the patient should wear a medical mask if available and keep a distance of at least 1.5 meters. Uh, this if you investigate or ask the patient, but if you take swab, you have to come very close to the patient. So the patient must wear, in this case, he must wear his mask, just only uh, bring uh, down uh, the mask under the nose to can take uh, the sample. Uh, otherwise, I have to uh, have a shield in my face. I have to have mask, I have to have gloves. I wear uh, my uh, gown uh, when I start to uh, coming near to investigate any a suspected uh, patient. Uh, if possible, a physical uh, barrier such as a glass or plastic panel can be used to avoid direct contact and keep a distance in the case of BBE is uh, necessary. Uh, collecting diagnostic respiratory samples like a nasopharyngeal uh, swab uh, can uh, provoke coughing under or sneezing and therefore lead to uh, production of uh, results. Healthcare workers collecting a diagnostic uh, respiratory sample in, uh, in closed spaces should wear a respiratory uh, Google eye protection, uh, gloves and gown, as we say. Uh, a medical mask can be used in a place of uh, respiratory in the event of a shortage of respiratory and for a drive-through uh, or outdoor testing facilities. Uh, actually, what we're doing now, or in, in Abu Dhabi and the uh, new E, uh, all the stuff which is uh, collecting the sample, uh, they wearing their uh, PPE uh, very proper by a very proper way. Uh, they protected, uh, they well trained, and also they have the uh, face shield and the mask and the gloves, uh, and they take uh, the sample by uh, proper way. Uh, in order to optimize the use of PPE, staff should be uh, assigned to carry out procedures in a designated area, for example, a dedicated area for a collecting diagnostic respiratory sample can be uh, set up. Uh, in each hospital, and uh, now there is a lot of points also to collecting uh, the samples. So these samples it's collecting in a specific place and well prepared, uh, well equipped by BBE for all uh, the staff. Uh, management of possible cases. If any possible case, what we will do? The possible COVID cases should be isolated, as we say, or at least separated from other patients as far as uh, possible. They should wear a, a medical mask if available, or at least cover their mouth with a tissue when coughing and uh, practice appropriate hand hygiene. Uh, appropriate response uh, routines should be set. Example, reporting to uh, designated 24-7 response services, such as the local public health authorities, uh, arrangement of diagnostic testing, and if appro appropriate following initial assessment, arrangement for safe transfer to a designated acute care unit for further diagnostic evaluation. Uh, in this point, uh, the second point when we implement to find that uh, facing problem, uh, as a staff in the hospital that when we start isolate in the beginning, okay, when coming uh, cases for uh, COVID, we start with isolation, but how many I proper isolation room uh, in the hospital? 
maximum we have three to five in the big hospital for isolation. But we find that we need more. It's not five patients only, no, it's 10, 20 for uh, the hospital. So how we can isolate all this number? And in the same time, there is no time to prepare uh, negative pressure uh, rooms or isolated room uh, by proper way. In this case, we start to use the normal regular room and uh, we start to close and we start to make the restricted proportions for the patient which we keep in this room. Uh, if it confirms it that it's uh, COVID, we start keep them in normal room till we transfer to uh, another hospital or government uh, by our ambulance or the government ambulance or whatever. And after we start to fumigate the room and uh, again, sterilize and uh, put the disinfectant and clean very, by proper way uh, the room which is a patient there. So also this one, we have to put in mind when we prepare our disaster plan, this is the second point, where is the PPE uh, enough for the uh, amount for the, all the stuff? And second for the isolation, how we can isolate. Uh, it's very costly and I, I not say for each hospital to make 20 or 30 isolation. It's useless in the normal situation. But in epidemiology, we have to be ready to can use the normal or regular room as isolated. So we have to know how uh, to use the regular room uh, to isolate the uh, confirmed patient for uh, COVID. And what we can do before and after uh, to keep the patient in these uh, rooms. Also for our ambulance, when we transfer the patient uh, from our facility to another facility, also we have to prepare the uh, ambulance, the staff, the paramedic uh, in the ambulance must be uh, educated and know how to deal with this patient. They must wear the complete BPE and after they transfer to the patient, what they have to do with the ambulance fumigation and sterilization and uh, disinfectant, and they have to clean the ambulance. All this, it's our role as a management uh, for quality or for infection control. We have to manage, we have to follow up for each and every case transferred from our hospital to a uh, other uh, hospital. Uh, the administrative measures in this situation, appropriate training, as we say, for the healthcare workers and other staff and regular update to ensure that uh, emerging evidence uh, and changing guidance are taken into account. Sure, here's the administration because this is uh, which the uh, connected between our staff, the frontline staff, which facing the patient or taking uh, uh, over uh, care for the patient and the other administrative in the back line. Uh, there is a lot of information we have, as I said in the beginning, we have to tell them how many cases now uh, nationwide, how many cases locally in our area, how many cases in our hospital uh, daily, we have to know how many infected, how many uh, PCR we make, uh, how many patient, normal patient we receive, so all these patients we have to have. Uh, also, uh, we have to uh, provide appropriate information and the training to the worker recruiting for surge capacity, set up a hospital COVID uh, preparedness and response committee, which is very important. We have to have committee to follow up all the situation in and outside uh, the hospital. Be aware of the minimum requirement for uh, designated units uh, managing confirmed COVID-19 patient. All the staff adequate trained in the uh, safe diagnostic evaluation and management of COVID-19 available of appropriate PPE and hand hygiene uh, products, uh, adequate laboratory support, uh, appropriate uh, cleaning, and we'll speak about cleaning now, and appropriate uh, waste management uh, procedures. A uh, plan for surge capacity is to meet uh, the needs in terms of patient beds, respiratory support, uh, PPE stuff, and uh, diagnosis. Uh, also still for the role for administrative to ensure uh, preparedness for a surge in critically ill patient identify rooms for this uh, patient. In addition, identify non-urgent outpatient visits 
for rescheduling or a cancellation and elective inpatient uh, diagnostic and surgical procedures. Uh, in this situation or in this point, we say, uh, we have to inform how many cases ha we have uh, infected, how many cases normal, and if we can to manage and to control the number of normal surgery or elective surgery, if we can delete it or delay it, uh, or postpone it to uh, another time. So we have to have from the administrator all the situation in the hospital. Does we can now receive the normal patient? Does we can now make the uh, elective uh, surgery? Does we have now no, uh, enough rooms to receive the patient? Or no, this is what I say. The data here it's very, very critical and very, very important, and we have to share it daily with our staff. And as we say in the previous page, that we have to have a committee to follow all this and to connect all this uh, area together. Identify and designate additional separate units that can be used for a diagnostic, evaluated, and treatment of COVID-19 patients. Define a strategy for testing, management, and follow-up of healthcare workers with respiratory symptoms in alignment to a national regional authorities. Uh, we follow now with the patient, but there is an important point. Our frontline, our doctors, our physician, or our staff, we have to follow up with them. We have to have regular uh, tests uh, for COVID-19. If any one of our staff or in the nurses or the physician has any symptoms, we have immediate to separate him from uh, deal with the patient, we have to make tests, we have to confirm, does he infected or not infected? Does he negative or positive? We have to follow up also, which is very important point for our staff. All staff with symptoms compatible with COVID-19 should be dispensed from their duties and isolated while symptomatic, and they should be prioritized in the uh, national testing policy in order to be able to uh, routine, uh, return to work as soon as possible once they are uh, SARS or COVID uh, free in accord, uh, uh, accordance with a guidance for discharge and ending isolation. For example, now in Emirates, uh, there is by regulation or by law, every two weeks, all the staff in the hospital, medical, non-medical, they have to make BCR test and to see and to follow up and immediate if any staff in between have any symptoms, immediate he will isolated. Ensure that visit, uh, visits to COVID-19 patients are limited uh, to the absolute minimum and that uh, visitors are aware of the need for hand and respiratory hygiene, including set uh, set up or cuff uh, etiquette. If possible, maintain a register of visitors for the uh, purpose uh, of contact uh, tracing. Uh, we have to have both everywhere in the hospital uh, some information, some instruction for the patient or for the visitors, how to deal, how to hand sanitize, how to control if he's sneezing or whatever, uh, if he has any symptoms, what he has to do. And also we have to have our staff, as we say, all over the hospital to guide the visitors and the patient for the uh, regulation and for the uh, instruction uh, to protect them uh, and also to protect our staff, and also to educate and guide them how to do uh, this uh, instruction for uh, hand sanitizing or uh, controlling the infection from COVID. All the staff with symptoms uh, compatible with COVID-19 should be uh, dispensed from their uh, duties and ensure that visitors also and patients uh, have the minimum education. Also, uh, for the visitors, if possible, to reduce the visitors uh, in this situation, only uh, the very uh, relative, or if the patient needs uh, somebody to be with him, it's okay. But if possible, we have to prevent or to stop the visitors uh, from the hospital just to reduce the risk for spreading of infection. For the patient management, with a small number of cases, patients should preferably be admitted to an isolation room. And this is what we say. If 
limited number. Okay, we can control and we can put in our isolation room. But if more patient, this is what we say, we have to start to use the regular room. We have to uh, control and manage this regular room as an isolation room uh, by the infection control team and our nursing staff. We have to uh, start manage the patient if coming over uh, the number of our isolation room. Uh, health monitors and management of exposed staff. Uh, if the staff uh, confirm it, we have to, as we said, we have to isolate him. We have to start treat him. We have to uh, put him in uh, inpatient or under observation uh, to treat uh, to treat him uh, and to take the time for isolation till he coming negative and complete treatment. Uh, in the beginning, we say 14 days, but I think now it's 10 days uh, till he coming negative and make another test to confirm that he's negative to come back to work. Uh, release from isolation. We cannot release any patient from isolation before confirm that he is negative, whether he's staff or patient. We have to uh, confirm after making the test is that he is uh, negative. WHO recommended that patients are released from uh, isolation 10 days after symptoms, uh, once or plus at least three additional days uh, without symptoms. So now we say that it's 10 days uh, for isolation. After this, he will make the test. Uh, if he's uh, positive, he will continue. If he's negative, finish 10 days and after he will release from uh, the isolation. An instruction for health care uh, professional and health care facility staff. Uh, this advice is for, uh, you know, with what I make in the, my paper, uh, just I read some advices for the professionals and for the frontline uh, staff. Uh, this advice is for all the staff working in health care facilities. Some hospital will be designated exclusively for the uh, management of COVID-19 patient. However, the probability of exposure uh, to the virus should be uh, considered high at all healthcare facilities. Uh, the following uh, precautionary uh, measures are recommended. Uh, staff who have contact with a patient should wear uh, scrubs for the uh, duration of the war. Uh, clean uh, scrubs should be uh, provided daily. Staff should also be provided with and wear special shoes at work uh, that can be left at the hospital if possible. Uh, at the end of that shift and after uh, appropriate uh, removal of PPE, staff should wash their hands uh, meticulously if possible, shower facility if not possible, direct when he go home, he must take shower, regular cleaning and disinfectant of uh, electronic equipment all the, your devices, your computer, your uh, uh, cell phone, uh, you have to have also sanitized because a lot of us forget that he catching uh, the telephone or touching the computer or whatever. And after he finished and remove his PPE and uh, just wash his hand or hand sanitize, he going again and he not notes that he was touching the telephone while he work or his computer. So he going, and detaching the telephone. So we must take care for this important point that as we sanitize our hand, we have also to have disinfectant for our devices, for the computer and for uh, our uh, cell phone. Uh, the following measure may be considered for staff working in the area of environmental cleaning and uh, waste management. Uh, this for the cleaners. Cleaners should be appropriately trained in cleaning procedures and waste disposal and receive appropriate instructions. Actually, because these cleaners, it's uh, low educated. So sometimes they're not aware completely by what we have, as they have to do. Uh, sometimes they just, he won't, it's uh, heavy work for him, he won't finish fast. So somebody must supervise him, must uh, monitoring him, must see what he did if he forget anything, if he clean by proper way or not. So we have to follow up always uh, with the cleaners to see that they doing by proper way or not. Uh, staff engaged in environmental cleaning and waste management should wear a medical mask 
eye protection, uh, goggles like goggles, uh, gloves and gown. Uh, we have to teach uh, these cleaners that always they have to wear uh, goggles if possible. Uh, always they must have gloves. Always they must have a uh, mask while they cleaning. If they have special gown or better to be disposable gown while they work and uh, clean. Uh, the regular cleaning followed by uh, disinfection uh, is recommended using hospital disinfectants active against viruses. We have to trace all the disinfectant what uh, we use uh, with uh, five, uh, 5, uh, 5 sodium hydro, uh, hydrochlorate, a dilution one to 100. So we have to uh, look behind them which disinfectant they use and we have to see also which concentration they use and also for any uh, ethanol or uh, spirits it must be not less than uh, 70 percent stuff engaged in waste management should be provided with and where appropriate ppe also when they transfer all the medical waste or all the regular waste they have to transfer it by proper way to the proper place uh, and they have to pay wear proper ppe for the laboratory test, also the laboratories, they have a very big role. All the specimen collected for laboratory investigation should be uh, regarded as potentially infectious. And healthcare workers who collect or transport uh, clinical specimens should adhere uh, rigorously to standard uh, precautions in order to minimize the possibility of exposure to pathogen. All the people, all the stuff which transfer all the uh, specimen to the lab, they must be aware uh, for all uh, the precautions and how they transfer it to the lab by a uh, proper way. Uh, also, we have a uh, very important point for long-term care facilities. Uh, long-term uh, patient, uh, they stay a long time and you have to take care and you cannot transfer and you cannot limit their uh, staying in the hospital. So we have to have a, a devastating effect since the residents are already vulnerable due to their age and possible underlying uh, health problems, uh, meaning that there is a high likelihood of unfavorable outcomes from them. They are the high risk or under high risk for infection. So we have to control uh, this patient uh, very carefully, and we have to give more attention for this patient and uh, to protect them. We have to educate them how to protect themselves. We have to control by infection control team also around uh, these rooms and uh, by the uh, nursing which care for the patient for long-term uh, facility. Uh, both disaster assessment, uh, we have to assess as a quality as we say, when we bought the plan in the beginning, it was normal plan. And when we start implementation, we find that there is a lot of gap uh, every day. And always we make assessment and we see where is the gap and we try to close it. In this situation, in this emerging situation, we cannot wait uh, for the uh, normal time uh, for or the cycle for BDCA. We have immediate action to can make the assessment. And as I say in the beginning, we have to make assessment daily to see if anything necessary to uh, can make. And we have to have update for our uh, plan. We have to update for our procedures. We have to follow up. It's not only an internal assessment for our plan or for our implementation. As we say, we have to follow all the uh, recent and all the data and uh, news from the outside, from WHA, from our government authority for what going on for the new uh, generation for the virus, for the vaccine, what going on, how numbers uh, infected around, and what we need to have, especially for the new generation for the virus. Does we need anything extra? Does we have to have uh, any other uh, procedures or not? So all this measurement, all this assessment, it must be very, very, uh, as a very, very important, immediate, and very frequently, uh, daily or weekly maximum. Final conclusion uh, for this one, I hope to not <laughs> that I not take time more. Uh, keeping as a law as a possible of number of workers exposed uh, or likely to be exposed 
we have to minimize the stuff which facing or the, in the front line which facing direct the infected patient. Uh, design of worker process and engineering control measures as so to avoid or minimize uh, the release of biological agent into the uh, place of war. Uh, organizational measures uh, to limit exposure such as a dedicated area for the uh, reception of infected uh, patient. Uh, technical measures such as uh, appropriate uh, ventilation, uh, physical barriers and other use of appropriate work uh, branches of uh, for laboratory work. Uh, this point it's very important that we have to have also enough uh, oxygen and ventilation uh, equipment for the uh, patient. Uh, training of workers, including in the use of uh, DPE uh, disinfection procedures and waste uh, disposal, the provision of appropriate DPE, uh, ensure means of safe uh, collection, storage, and uh, disposal of waste by workers, including the use of uh, secure and identifiable uh, containers after uh, suitable treatment. Ensure workers are uh, provided with uh, appropriate and adequate washing and uh, toilet facilities, which may be include eye washes and or skin uh, antiseptics. We have to put for uh, hand washing everywhere and hand sanitizing everywhere, and we have to educate uh, all the staff. Uh, appropriate measures shall be taken by the uh, employer to ensure that workers and their uh, prepared uh, uh, representative uh, receive sufficient and appropriate training uh, concerning for potential risk to health for precautions to be taken uh, to uh, prevent exposure, uh, hygiene requirement, uh, wearing and use of uh, BBE, uh, steps to be taken by workers in the case of uh, incident and uh, to prevent uh, incident, uh, the training shall be given at the beginning of work involving contact with biological agent, uh, adapted, take account of new change in risk and uh, repeated periodically uh, if necessary. And this is a uh, reference uh, for anyone want uh, have reference, we can share it. Hello. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ali. That it was very clear, and thank you for the um, in, in, well, insight in your daily work. Just one question: What do you think was the most challenging part of your plan that you have implemented? As, uh, in the beginning, the most challenge it was educated for the staff for the precaution which we have to do and they have uh, to follow. Uh, most of the stuff they was not aware completely by the actual situation and how it's serious and how it's, uh, dangerous, this in the beginning. Uh, the second challenge, uh, as I told you, uh, the space uh, available for the patient, we face a very big problem. Uh, when we have more patient, we have only limited number three, uh, only isolation room. As a normal for hospital, it was okay for us, but in this situation, uh, it was a very big challenge. And uh, as I say in the presentation, we start with a regular uh, room as isolation. And in these cases, we start make very restricted uh, procedures for the staff uh, and under completely supervision from the infection control team, how we can use this regular room as isolation room and how we can manage uh, the patient inside uh, this room. Uh, and also in the beginning, the BPE equipment, it was a very big uh, problem for us, not only for us, for everywhere. Uh, it was not enough. So we will start to manage uh, in this such uh, situation. Thank you so much. I think we can all relate to your problems, especially getting the PPA. I think that's a problem that we all have. I think everybody that's joining can uh, yes. sing a song. Well, thank you so much uh, for your interesting speech and thank also to please enjoy the day and stay with us, please, Dr. Rolly. I sure okay. am with you all the day and tomorrow and after tomorrow. Any question, any time, uh, I'm ready. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank so you. now.